Coming up on World's Greenest Homes. In the Canadian countryside, a green home with a pool made from recycled carpets and tires. We want it to be very low tech and very uh, friendly for the laborers. And so. cheap. And cheap, exactly. And in Minnesota, getting the most for the least, a dome in the woods. This uses 60% less material than a conventional house when you count the wall and the roof area. Resource efficient is the word that should be used. I'm Emmanuel Beliveau. Come with me on World's Greenest Homes and see the most extraordinary homes on the planet. Homes that are gorgeous, cool, and green. It's hard to believe this quaint small town with its spectacular panoramic views is just 10 minutes from Canada's busiest highway. We're near the small town of Coburg, an hour and a half drive outside of Toronto, Canada's largest city. It was this beautiful landscape on 65 acres of land that one couple fell in love with. But there was a problem. The nearest utility pole was a half mile away. Now that could have been a deal breaker, especially in this northern climate. But our homeowners figured out a way to use sun and wind for almost all their energy needs. And did I mention, they weren't prepared to sacrifice any of life's creature comforts. In a climate where winters are long and cold and summers are short and hot, this home manages to achieve 95% of its power from the sun and the wind. Not bad by anyone's standards. That's mainly due to the ingenuity and careful planning of landscape architect Michael Hubicki and his wife Tina. This inventive couple live here with their 14-year-old daughter Hannah and best friends Joey and Maya. The average home that's our size would use between 150 and 180 kilowatt hours a day. And you're only using how much? 12. At almost 5,000 square feet, this two-story home is hardly the homesteader's cabin. The house is divided into two areas. On one side, there's an open concept dream kitchen and dining room that connects to the family room. On the other side of the house is the master bedroom and bathroom plus the second bedroom. And outside, a garage that looks like a barn and a pool with a waterfall. How you doing? Hi. Emmanuel. Hi, I'm Mike. Nice Mike, to meet you. Mike, nice to meet you. Tina, nice to meet you. Pleased to meet you. It's beautiful. I can see why you move out here. It's, uh, this is a dream come true for us. It's uh, 65 acres, we've got some privacy, some seclusion, but still <laughs> lots of land to, to be able to do the things we love, gardening and growing our own vegetables and have a fruit orchard. And looking around, all these natural materials, I love all the rock fencing and all the wood and the stone, it's beautiful. Yeah, Thank we you. really looked at trying to integrate the natural materials that we found on the property with uh, other natural materials that we could recycle from elsewhere. We really wanted to try to integrate our house and, and uh, the dwelling into the landscape, instead of having it on, we wanted to build it in. Well, let's see the house. Sure, Absolutely. come on in. This is a dining room kitchen. It's nice, well, I like the curved vaulted ceiling. Yeah, the ceiling is local pine. All the trim in the house, which is, is the uh, white raised paneling here, is all local basswood as well. And we did bring a skylight in to try to get as much natural light as possible. You really don't need much for light on during the day, do you? No, no not at all. I see you have chicken wire. Keeps that country style going. We've uh, tried to bring the country feel in with modern energy efficient appliances. Um, the stove and oven runs on propane, but again, trying to be very energy efficient. Looking at all the appliances you have in your kitchen, it's hard to believe you're off the grid for five years. Well, the average home uses about 70% of their electricity to heat the house in hot water. And because we didn't do that, our electricity demand was much lower. So with integrating these energy efficient appliances into the house, it just became much more affordable, much more sustainable. What kind of floors are these? This, this is an engineered hardwood floor, so it's got seven layers of wood that are all glued together. But you have radiant heating here. Exactly, and that's why we went with the engineered hardwood, because when it's heating up and cooling down, it won't contract or expand. And Mike's country style follows through in the living room. I love these beams. That's that country, that country chic style, isn't it? Yeah, we really wanted to try to create a separate feeling to this part of the house, almost a cathedral. Are these beams structural? No, they're actually decorative. They were salvaged from a barn that was falling down. Actually, from the roof of the barn, they're called purlins. 
So they're a nice, clean uh, wood with very few nails in them. Beautiful furniture, solid stuff. And we also had uh, a lot of the furniture made locally by a female cabinet maker. She did a really nice job. The whole part about having a carbon footprint is trying to keep everything as local That's as you right. can. Yeah. So you're using local tradespeople, local furniture builders, and local materials. And local sun and wind. And local sun and wind, there yeah. you go. Well, it actually comes from far away, but... It does. <laughs> and this is the other side of your fireplace. On this side, you chose stone? Yeah, again, with the keeping with the more country motif in this room, so we wanted to go with the, uh, the stone. This looks like cultured stone. It is cultured stone, yeah. <laughs> well, it's a good thing about this, it can store some of that heat in the daytime. Exactly. And at night, it'll radiate off at night. So you can actually feel the stone here, it's nice and warm. It heats up, yeah. Mm -hmm. And these window benches are great. Have a lot of people over, you can all hang out here, and if someone stays late, they can always sleep up here too. Absolutely. But the other thing is you can see your property from here. We, uh, we really tried to situate the house and the windows so that we could bring the outside in. And to create a, a place to be able to sit down on low windows like this, we thought would be really, really a, a great feature mm -hmm. to have. We do sit here quite often, and I've had the odd nap after lunch. Let the sun shine on my face. It's, it's really relaxing. And with the low sills, you really get the sense that you're almost outside, don't it's you? It's a nice sense of connectivity. Yeah. And also this space, we, tried, we brought the ceiling down in it as well. It's a little bit more intimate. And then with the post, it creates the... Uh, the, the connection to that larger cathedral space. You do feel divided, but you're right. You are still connected. Yeah. At the end of the hall is the master bedroom. Well, this is our bedroom. Nice, quaint and simple. Yeah, we wanted to keep it nice and simple and small because we're just sleeping in it. You're right. The average American home has really large master bedrooms. Yeah, we were not into that. Next door, though, the bathroom is a little more ornate. What a great tub. Yes, this is actually an old salvage tub that was uh, built in 1905 in Port Hope, which is a local town as well. An interesting story, when we went to the salvage yard to pick it out, the owner encouraged us to lay down in the different tubs, even though they were, they're quite grimy. Then we got the five and a half foot, but when we got it home and I had my first bath, the water only comes up to the drain. So it uh, was coming up to about mid midpoint on my torso, and I wish I'd gone to the six footer. It's okay for me, though. It's okay for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess what he should have said was, I'll fill it with water, and then you all should test it. Much more accurate shopping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Now, let's head down to the basement. These are great windows. This is a, a, a triple pane window. It's about 800 pounds, and uh, it's about R8. R8, that's huge. The R value of a window reflects how well it resists the flow of heat. The higher the R value, the more energy efficient it is. Windows in a typical house are usually R1. Double panes are around, what, two, two and a half? Exactly. So it's very efficient windows. Very efficient windows. Yeah. Yeah. Makes a big difference. It sure does. Would you like to see the boiler room? Yes. This was the first wood gasification boiler in Canada. It was really important to be able to offset the need for electricity and heating with something else, and we chose to use wood. So should you not have enough sunlight, this system kicks in? Exactly, and because it's wood, we have to manually feed it. The wood goes into a firebox right in here, mm -hmm. and then there's a uh, ceramic combustion chamber in the bottom of the unit where it burns about 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And that bottom chamber is burning the off-gassing coming off of the primary burn of this wood. Exactly. So it's very efficient and, um, and very low emissions as well. Wow. How much wood do you go through in the winter? Yeah, on an average um, day that's say about zero to minus 10, we'll use one fire. So that's about uh, 10 pieces like this. Now, what if you go out of town? Do you have a backup system for that? Absolutely, we do. We just have to hit a switch and then the propane will look after that. Oh, I see. So it's completely automated if you want it to be. Yes. Exactly. Well, that's great. It's a great system. We love it. Can we uh, head outside this way? Absolutely. Outside, at the back of the house, is a real oasis with some very green ideas. I heard a lot about this pool. I was reading a book about how this is an eco pool. The eco pool is kind of our own invention. Basically, my dad and I built it, and we want it to be very low tech and very uh, friendly for the laborers. And so, cheap. And cheap, exactly. So it's built out of recycled car tires, recycled carpet. We layered up the tires, filled those with sand laid the carpet over it, then we put the pond liner on, used a piece of recycled plastic to get the edge on the infinity. The water then flows over that edge and into the pond. Mm -hmm. Down through the drain, it goes into a series of two filters and then through the very energy efficient pump. And it's not that deep, how deep is it? 
It's about five feet deep in the middle, okay. so it's, it's a plunge pool. Yeah, that's not so bad. So you yeah. just dug us out of the ground. Exactly. Yeah, my dad and I uh, pretty much built the whole thing ourselves. We had a machine for one weekend that dug the hole out, and the rest of it's just all low-tech manual labor. We probably built the whole thing for about $1,800. 1800 bucks. Yeah. It costs thousands and tens of thousands of dollars to build a pool. Yeah, well, hopefully one that looks as beautiful, it would uh, it'd be a bit more than that, but it's, it, it's turned out really well. We're really pleased with it. The Infinity Edged Pool is a swing pool constructed with the illusion of extending all the way to the horizon or to infinity. It's like swimming in a pond, except it's warm and, and the, the bottom's kind of cushiony because we do have the recycled carpet underneath. Because it also has a black pond liner, it really absorbs the solar radiation and it can heat up between 15 and 20 degrees in a day. Do you use a pool often? We do, it's, it's excellent. We use it right into the fall. I don't think most people would believe that you could actually have all these great elements and be off the grid. Yeah, if, if you do it right, you can do it. Out here are the home's electricity workhorses, the 12 solar panels and the wind turbine. But the biggest energy saving technology comes from these 60 solar heating tubes on the garage. They provide all the home's hot water from May to October. This is our power room. Ah, this is where the batteries are. Are these your inverters right here? Yeah, we've got two 3,000 watt inverters here. Our solar controller and our wind controller. Where's your master switch? The master switch is right inside this utility box, right here. Utility service disconnect, so we flip that over and we're officially off grid. Just like that, as simple as that. Just like that. So, when your wind turbine's spinning, mm -hmm. when your solar panels are collecting, it's coming in here, hitting the inverter. It actually goes down through this system and it goes DC current into the batteries. Right. The battery storage, 3,000 amp hours of battery storage. About how long would that last if all your systems shut down and you had to rely solely on batteries? If we drain that right down to the very bottom, it would be about uh, 10 to 11 days. 10 to 11 days based on how efficient you are in the house. Exactly. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. That's very good. So as a backup system, that's 10 days. Exactly. And then it would be more if we had any sun or any wind. It would just build that up. I see. Okay, so it goes from the batteries into the inverter, that converts it to AC, AC and AC then goes to the house to power the house. Right, exactly. What do you have in your hand? This is a... Oh! Yes. This is a demonstration uh, tube of the solar thermal system that's on the barn. So you can see it's a vacuum tube, so there's no air inside. The sun shines on the black side of it, and it heats up an alcohol mixture that's in this, this pipe, and it comes up and it heats up this uh, heat transfer uh, which is in a manifold, and we pass glycol past it, and that'll then go into the house to heat up the uh, storage tank and domestic hot water. And the glycol tra travels from the garage into your storage tank, and the reason we use glycol is it doesn't freeze in the ground from there to exactly. your house. Exactly. Right. We've had some days in the winter that's minus 35, and the glycol still is no problem. No problem at all. Yeah. That's great. Now, these systems are wonderful. I've seen these in Germany and all different places. This is really great technology, and it's mm -hmm. the kind of thing that anybody can put on their house. Well, you can have this anywhere. Any, everybody needs hot water. Exactly. Either to heat your house or to bathe with. It's probably the most cost effective, too, of all the systems. Yeah, because cost wise, what's a full system like this cost? Uh, there's, when we bought this, there was really only one manufacturer. So our system was about $8,000. But now there's many new manufacturers. And I, I bet you the system that we paid eight grand for could be bought for maybe a thousand. It's a huge reduction in cost. It's a huge reduction. Obviously the, pot, the, the, obviously, the payback time on something like that is much quicker. Yeah, it makes it much more viable. Yeah. And I have to say, from an efficiency point of view, doing solar hot water is probably one of the most effective things you can do as far as reducing your bills. Absolutely. Solar thermal is, is a really great installation. It's something any home could use, because we all use hot water either to heat our houses or yep. for bath water. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's a great uh, retrofit for either an existing home or apartment or you could put it in brand new. In a cold Canadian climate, finding new and renewable ways of producing energy takes real pioneering spirit. Mike and Tina did it in style. Right from the very beginning, we knew that there were gonna be some bumps in the road, but we wanted to take that challenge and we actually felt like pioneers. Our next home is a dome home, a geodesic dome. It's a bit like a soccer ball. They're both made up of a series of pentagons. In fact, if you cut a soccer ball in half, you've got the basic design. Dome homes are strong, energy efficient, and talk about sustainability, this next house could weather any storm. 
We're in North Branch, Minnesota, a 45 minute drive north of St. Paul. North Branch is named for the North Branch of the Sunrise River that flows through this town of 8,000 people. Nestled close by on a 50 acre wooded lot is a home called Bear Creek Dome, based on a geodesic dome made popular in the 1950s. We've got a 49 foot diameter dome, so outside to outside is 49 feet. It ends up being with the cupola on top, which is used for ventilation purposes. It's about 33 feet high to the top of the cupola. The spherical design of this home provides strength because all the points of the structure share the stress evenly. It can withstand earthquakes and 200 mile an hour winds. Even the weight of several tons of snow only makes it stronger and a dome shape uses 60% less structural material than a traditional box home. What makes Bear Creek Dome so special? Everything in this dome is as natural and chemical free as possible. Meet Dennis Odin Johnson and his wife, Tessa Hill. When it comes to domes, Dennis is an expert. He's been selling dome building kits since 1978. They finished building their dome home just in time for their wedding in 2007. Because domes are self-supporting, they have no internal walls, so the interior is a large open space. There's a large kitchen that spills into the dining room, a living room, and an entertainment area. On the other half of the main level is the master bedroom and master bath. Upstairs, on the loft level, is a guest bedroom and an extension from the dome leads to a small home office. Welcome, we're so glad to have you here. This is our home, this is called Bear Creek Dome. Come on in and take a look at our dome. And this is my wonderful kitchen. I love it here, it's big, it's very non-toxic both uh, in the products that we use to build it and the products that we use to clean. And there's good reason why Tessa and Dennis are so passionate about the products they use. I lost my son to a brain tumor when he was 11 years old, and um, I believe that toxins cause that problem. And uh, Dennis and I both lost our spouses to cancer, so we're constantly on guard and we're constantly trying to tell other people about these issues. Tessa does that through her organization, Kids for Saving Earth. Its mission is to educate people about toxins in their environment. Everybody congregates in this area, and you feel very comfortable. We've tried to make it a very informal space. The oak slabs are from our property. These all came from one tree in a consecutive cutting of that tree. So the holes go through, and they're, they're all from the same tree. And I know the tree. I know where it came from for our property. In fact, most of the wood comes from fallen trees on their land. The rest is reclaimed or sustainably grown. We also like the wood that's not so perfect. Most people are looking for perfect wood and obviously this is our kind of perfect. This countertop, um, it's about 18, 20 feet long, is made from redwood that's from the Green Belt Brewery in Northeast Minneapolis. This is turn of the century, uh, 1890s, 1880s wood. Dennis has been collecting things for many years. How, how long ago did you collect these? Uh, about 1970s, yeah. I got that piece. <laughs> well, this is the central living room area, and I love this couch. We uh, got it at a store that sells product that's been used for design purposes in different facilities. So it was, a, it was a great bargain for us. When it comes to heat efficiency, this dome gets top marks. The floors are radiant heated. The windows are triple pane, quarter inch tempered glass. And the dome walls are 18 inches thick with 16 inches of insulation. This past winter, the thermometer downstairs at five feet off the main floor read 65 degrees five feet off this floor on the upper level was 65 degrees. People say heat rises. The difference in a dome is that if hot air rises, cold air drops. You've got a natural airflow happening in the dome. 
this is what I would consider the most central feature of the home. It's beautiful. It, uh, when you have a fireplace like this, you don't need artwork. And by putting the fireplace in the middle of the dome, the heat radiates evenly. We also have outside air intakes, and that stops any interior air from going into the fireplace. So it's a sealed class door unit. We're able to heat the master bedroom and on two rooms upstairs with ductwork that come off of this. It also blows hot air coming out of the vents on the top of this fireplace. I really love the mantle. The mantle is Corten steel and we intentionally rusted it. We, before we put it in, we had it outside in the rain. Once it rusts to a certain point, it stops rusting. Just love the look. And it's hard not to miss the big slabs of stone that make up the hearth, leftovers from abandoned iron mines in northern Minnesota. This is taconite rock. You're seeing rock that is two to two and a half billion years old. The open pit iron mines had to remove all this overburden to get to the high-grade iron ore. It's about 3,000 pounds of rock. We went up and picked it up with our pickup truck and trailer, hauled down uh, this rock. This is just all natural stone. Now it's onto the master bedroom, just behind the living area. There are a couple of really cool features that I love. Uh, one of them is this bed, which is uh, also a um, Murphy bed that lifts up and we can close up. We entertain a lot and have big events and, and we want to have this space so people can actually wander in here and have it not be a bedroom. So that's why we did it. But for anyone trying to save space, uh, this is an excellent option. Another favorite feature of my master bedroom is this sauna. It's an infrared sauna. It doesn't have that steam that sort of burns. I, I could never tolerate the steam and the heat. I like it because it helps take toxins out of my system. It makes me sweat. Anytime you sweat, you get more toxins out of your body. 20, 25 minutes and it's great. What's even better, this sauna uses 90% less electricity to operate than a conventional electrically heated one. This is our master bathroom, and there are several things in this bathroom that have Enviro design aspects. Of course, we've got the fallen wood that we use for the countertops over here. And these are seconds, these bowls. Uh, uh, they're actually salad bowls. We drilled a hole in them, and they make a perfect sink. And we put non-toxic polyurethane over it, and they work beautifully, and they were very inexpensive. This is our shower. And this is a fiberglass door that actually came off of a property that we have in North Carolina that um, was demolished during the hurricane. And uh, we just, we saved a lot of components and we reused them. A big part of what makes this space is the, the light and the beautiful window. You know, you don't have to have a mirror to brush your teeth. I can do that without looking. And I can look out at this beautiful natural scene. Dennis has been singing the praises of dome-shaped homes for 30 years. They're energy efficient and give you the most amount of space for the least amount of material. If someone wanted to build their own dome, I know they can do it. But if you're not afraid of scaffolding, anybody can do this. It simply bolts together, very simple, and they go together in two to three days. And just in time for that big event. It was a joy to have the wedding in a home that you love and that you feel so much a part of.